Hello guys, so this would be our second video. So here we will be seeing uh, how you have to tackle, I'll be sharing the screen, how you have to tackle related questions for procurement. Okay, so this is procurement and also I may cover sourcing also in this, okay. So this we need to go in detail because 80% of the chances your interview is into procurement and sourcing this. So what is the question which is asked in procurement? So basically first, what is your day to day profile? So if your job is on procurement and sourcing, how you have to answer this. So procurement and sourcing this compulsory, you have to keep it in your profile. So you have to say currently you're working for XYZ company. And first explain about your family background, about your education, where you have joined the company now. But uh, apart from that, tell about your basic name and where do you come from. So then after that, you say uh, a typical day in a typical day, basically you're working on PR to PO process. That is your major of the task. So uh, from the client side or from the production department of the client side, so the client for which you're working, suppose Norma Group. So the production departments of Norma Group who work in the plant, they create a purchase requisitions and those purchase requisitions are assigned to you. So on a daily basis, around 20 to 25 purchase requisitions are assigned to you individually. You are 12 people. You are working in a team of 12 members. Out of that, four people are working in PR to PO process. Two are working in like sourcing plus P2P. Apart from that, three are working in accounts and invoicing. Two are One is working as an auditor. One is a team lead. And apart from that, two to three people are working on master data. So you have to say your day-to-day -day profile is uh, from the client side, you receive the purchase requisitions via the emails. And also there is a ticketing tool uh, from where you get a PR also. So how it happens, I'll tell you. You get an email also once PR is created. And apart from that, there will be ticketing tools in company. Okay, so if they ask you name of the tool, you can say there is a ticketing tool service now, Jira. And if you don't remember any name, you can see, you can say client customized tool client customized tool so you have to say <clears throat> once uh, the production department of the client side create a pr and you receive an email as well as you get a ticket in service now jira or any client custom tool tell any one of that and first you say just email if they ask more in detail then tell about ticketing tool how it will be i'll tell you once a pr is created in this tool a ticket number is generated for example any of the tool a ticket number is 001. So you open the service now. You open ticket number 001, which is assigned to you. You see the PR number there and open your SAP. Open that particular PR, make a PO, and then close the ticket in service now. So that would be the process. So you don't go in detail. This you remember for here, but how you have to sell tell you on a day to day profile, you receive a PR from the client side, from the end user side via the email. And once you receive the purchase requisitions on a daily basis, around 20 to 25 purchase requisitions are assigned to you by your team lead as a team, your three to four members working in PR to PO process. And once you receive a PR, you're validating the PR. What you're validating in the PR is first, once you receive the PR, you are checking whether the quotation is attached to the PR or no. And according to the quotation, all the points are correct or no, like price is correct or no, unit of measure is correct or no. Then apart from that, you are seeing the vendor address is correct or no, vendor code is correct or no. Apart from that, you are seeing the delivery date is perfect or no, because if someone creates a PR and they want the material also today, which is not possible. So delivery date also has to be accurate. Delivery address is correctly mentioned or no. So these are your checkpoints according to your SOP. SOP means standard operating procedure. So you validate all these things. And if everything is correct in the PR, you go ahead and convert the PR into purchase orders. So on a daily basis, 20 to 25 PRs are assigned to you. And after validating, you're trying to convert all 20 to 25 purchase requisitions into purchase orders. And once you convert all the POs, your next job is these POs are going for approvals for team lead and managers. So you are chasing the team lead and manager for the approval because sometimes what happens? team leads managers are very busy. So you have to chase them. So you're chasing them. And after getting the relevant approval, you're sending the emails to the vendors, which emails the PO. And after that, you have to say your logistics coordinators. There was a separate team to take the follow up. And sometimes you also took the follow up from the vendor for the material delivery. How you take a follow up via the email. So logistics coordinator. Okay. So I, I just wrote a wrong spelling, but it is also a coordinator. So this is your job. So five to six hours of the job, you do this itself and you receive a PR, which has multiple line items. So around 10 to 20 line items in a single PR, which is listed material or service. 
and after that you chase the follow up when like whatever send the po to the approval take the follow up you need to know t code also here me 21 and me 51 and and all these things and once the po is sent to the supplier coordinator takes the follow up and once you get the material there is a separate gr and team to do gr and now what is your next job next job is to do the reports so what reports you make you make a open pr report like how many prs have been created but abhi tak uska po nahi hua hai so thus those PO, prs are known as open prs the pr has been created but there is you haven't converted into po you take the report for overdue po overdue po means you have created a po but still the material has not been delivered you see resource wise po what is this you have four people working in team how many each person has created a po that you take then these all and sla breach like suppose how many like you got 20 prs all prs you converted into po within time and one pr you converted late so your sla got breached that is service level agreement which i have told in previous video it is a time limit to convert a pr to po so the sla for a pr to po process you have to say is two hours to two business days Two business days means 16 hours, 8 hours, 1. So, urgent PR is 2 hours. Normal PR is 2 hours. It takes 2 business days. You can take 2 business days to convert it into PO. For vendor selection, that is RFQ and sourcing process, if they ask you SLA, this is 15 to 30 days to find a new vendor and all. So, open PR report. What do you mean by open PR? You received a PR, but you haven't converted into PO. Uh, overdue PO, ban gaya, but you didn't get the material. Resource-wise, each team member, how many? And what are the SLA breaches? So, how do you extract this report? You have to say from SAP to Excel. Which T code are used for PR report? We use ME5A. For PO report, we use ME2L. Like for vendors, ME2M for how many materials? ME2N for PO numbers. You can Google this later. So, you use this. T codes extract the report from SAP to Excel. After extract extracting the report to Excel, you put pivot table, pivot table, we look up whatever, and then you take these reports into PowerPoint. Then give the description about the report in PowerPoint, and then you present it to your manager and client side also. So if they ask you, do you have a client facing experience? You have to say yes. You used to interact with the end users, even the managers of the client side for reporting purpose, end users for follow up. Like if any issue is there in a PR, you raise, you go to the end user and every 15 days you used to have a meeting with client side. They used to attend the meeting also. So, and the reports in companies are always kept at SharePoint. You can say so SharePoint is a common location where everyone can edit the files guys. So if there is an Excel uh, PowerPoint file, everyone wants to edit the file. So you keep it in SharePoint, everyone can do it. So there you present the report to the client. So once more, if you see on your daily basis, you are receiving 20 to 25 purchase requisitions. You're analyzing the purchase requisitions, converting into purchase orders, validation points. I have told you what to validate. After that, you are basically chasing for the approvals. And once the approvals are done, you are sending the PO to the supplier. After that, logistics coordinator is taking the follow-up. Sometimes you also take the follow-up via emails on a daily basis. You receive the PRs, which have around 10 to 20 line items. And apart from that, also you're working on reporting activities like open PR, overdue PO report. And apart from that, also you are working on sourcing process as well or sourcing and RFQ as well, you have to say. So on sourcing and RFQ process, what you have to say on a daily basis, if we don't have a supplier and there is a new sourcing request to find a supplier, then you are doing also sourcing and RFQ process. So what happens in a sourcing process, guys? You get a request from the supplier. Sorry, you get a request from the client side that they want a new vendor for a particular material. So once you get the request, what you do, you do internal sourcing and you try to get the vendors from your SAP. So in SAP, you will have lot many vendors. So suppose if I tell you, I want 500 laptops, that is my requirement. First thing you have to ask me is what configuration, what make, what product, what model number, everything you ask me, take my requirements. Those all requirements will be there in sourcing request. So take the request, take the sourcing request, read it, and then check for the supplies internally in your SAP. If it is not there, then only go to external sourcing and try to find the supplies outside. And then once you find the supplies, then what you do, you basically send the RFQs to them, get the quotes from them, then compare the quotes, negotiate with the vendors. And after you negotiate with the vendors, you create a comparative statement in Excel. What do you mean by comparative statement? Suppose there are three vendors, there are three vendors, 
L1 is the best vendor, L2 is the best vendor, L3 is the be third best vendor. So you create a comparative statement, who is the best vendor, second best, third best, and you send this report again to the requester who has created the sourcing request. And then he tells you whom to approve. And then that vendor, you create a contract with that vendor, contract or agreement, and that vendor is added in SAP. So this is sourcing process and RFQ process guys. So you get a sourcing request for a material. Then you do internal sourcing. You check in your SAP external sourcing. How to do external sourcing means if I go to Google here, if I go here and if I type, I told you, you are dealing with a US supplies. So sourcing platforms, sourcing websites for manufacturing suppliers in USA. So see here. If I go here, sourcing for manufacturing supplies in USA, infozednot.com, take this, graphiteconnect.com, then apart from that, thomasnet.com. So on these, we try to source the supplier. This you have to tell that way. Okay. So how do you negotiate with the suppliers? You negotiate with the suppliers. This we tell in your classes also. So you might be knowing payment terms, who is getting giving better payment terms, info terms, value addition. Value addition means I want a machine. I will ask for free installation also. That is a value addition. Then apart from that price, delivery date, quantity, sometimes quality, contracts, agreements, contracts, agreements are the same. So on all the AMCs, AMC is very important, annual maintenance contract on all these things, you basically negotiate with the supplier and try to prepare a report and then send it to the requester for approval. Okay. So now <clears throat> what you will say contract means what? Suppose if I want the material from a supplier and is not ready to decrease the price and he is the monopoly supplier, only supplier, then convince him that you need the material for longer time and maintain a contract so that he will get a confidence that you are going to give him a long, long term business. Okay. So this is about the RFQ and sourcing. Okay. So here, if they ask you, <clears throat> have you worked on vendor contracts? So you have to say you are you know what things are there in a way. See, whenever you select a vendor, you need to make a contract. This is done by a contract team. You have to say that is a legal team, but you have knowledge about this, like what points are added in a vendor contract. So go to Google and read about this and keep notes with you. Points included in vendor contract. If you go here, you may get some website. See here, wakilsearch.com. If you go to Wakil search here, you'll get what are the things which are there in a contract of vendor. Just basic things. What is the scope of the work? What is the agreement period? Confidentiality clauses, NDA, both a non-disclosure agreement. These you have to know. So non-disclosure mean you shouldn't disclose any vendor's information. Vendor shouldn't disclose your financial information. Okay. So now once more, we'll see what all things you're doing. So first thing day-to-day -day profile. How will you answer on a daily basis? You are receiving around 20 to 25 purchase requisitions. You are working for a manufacturing client, which is of us based. And once you receive the requisition from the client side, you are verifying the requisition, validating with respect to quantity, delivery date, quote price, unit of measure, delivery address. And once everything is fine, you're converting the PR to PO. And after converting the PR to PO, you are taking the follow up from the suppliers uh, through a logistics coordinator. And also you're doing the report activities like open PR, open PO, overdue PO, SLA report, resource wise PO report. Apart from that, also you're working if any new sourcing request comes for new vendors. So you're getting the sourcing request, uh, reading the sourcing request, doing the internal sourcing, doing the external sourcing if required, if vendor is not there internally. Then creating a RFQs in RFQs, what material I want, how much quantity I want, when I want, where I want with a quotation deadline date, sending to the supplier via the email and then getting the quotes from the supplier via the email, then doing the price comparison, then negotiating with the suppliers on payment terms, in quote terms, value add, price date, quality, quantity. And then after that, creating a comparative statement, who is a better and then taking again the approval from the requester who had created a sourcing request. And once he approves, then you'll select that vendor and then contract him maintains a contract and I have a bit of knowledge about contract, but I didn't work in the contract. And so for that, you have to Google. So this is the job responsibility, what you are doing. And apart from that, you have knowledge on vendor master data, material master data and invoicing. Also, you have a knowledge and also for invoice. Also, you can say you have not worked in invoice, but whenever any vendor has any issues related to bills. So you used to check with the invoice team. You have to say, so this is your day to day profile. Next question is. What is a two way match? What is a three way match? Google this also. So two way match is basically matching of PO and invoice, which is usually done in case of service orders. 
in case of three way match you are matching purchase order against the gr against the invoice which is done in case of material or low value materials uh, low value services so two way match is for uh, service that is po and invoice three way match is for po gr invoice which is done in case of material you match this and then make the payment to the supplier then <clears throat> apart from that next question is what categories are you managing so what categories if they ask you then you have to say you are working 70% on direct materials means you receive a pr for direct materials this list we have given you separately and 30% indirect materials 30% indirect so indirect list also is there indirect means office supply stationery items softwares laptops this comes under indirect in indirect there will be one more guys in indirect there will be it procurement if they ask you it procurement you have to say you procured laptop systems hard drives printer scanner softwares these things non it non it if there is this also comes under indirect non it means you can say office supplies stationery items insurances first aid kits and then comes mro mro means maintenance repair or service this also comes under indirect so you should you should say 70 percent you worked in direct materials like raw materials list we have given you 30 percent these all materials you have to say suppliers were based out of us who were your suppliers us based names also we have given in the separate list make a list 15 vendors 15 materials buy at it what commodities are you managing commodities means same thing they are asking you the materials commodities is nothing but material so you can say say the same thing 70 percent direct materials 30 percent indirect and it was mechanical category and these were the material names you have to say those things SLA, I've told you two hours to two business days and for RFQ 15 to 30 days. Then they will ask you, what are the challenges you have faced in PR to PO process? So challenges in PR to PO process, you have to say, you used to create a PO to the supplier, then supplier used to not give the material on time. Then what you used to do, you used to take the follow up with the supplier, then you used to check for the alternate supplier, uh, try for the spot buying process. Uh, spot by means go to the directly check who can give you the material you know open network if that also is not there then you should convince the client for some delay so those challenges you have faced and managed then apart from that as i told you in the first video challenge pr got increased so that you can say then apart from that if they ask you if you create a po for 100 pieces and vendor delivers 80 pieces but you have made a payment for 100 pieces what will you do so you have to say in these cases for those uh, 100 whatever uh, payment you have made first you will chase the vendor for the 20 pieces and you make sure you're getting those 20 pieces by emailing him and if not then you'll raise a credit memo and get the refund of 20 pieces few things you have to google here which already i have given in the message notes also credit note these are for invoice actually credit memo and debit note google this and then what were the payment terms you are using payment terms means in how many days you need to make a payment to the vendor once you receive the material or bill so the more the payment term it is better so 45 days is a payment term 90 days the vendor who has a payment of 90 days is better for us because to pay him we have 90 days that much we can gain interest so you have to say the payment term like 45 days net 60 days net some payment terms where you want give 10 percent advance and remaining after 30 days this also were there in core terms international commercial terms so read about this, Google this, but in company, you have to say you worked X works delivered at place FOB. These three, you Google about this. Okay. So these were your income terms. There are 11 input terms or C root, A root and land root. So totally. So read, but these three you used in the company, you can say. Apart from that, if they ask you ASN. So ASN is a shipping notification, advanced shipping notification. So to track your material delivery, ASN is important. You'll get a slip from them. Okay. Next you Google BOL bill of lading. This is also sometimes asked or delivery note. Then T codes also you have to Google basics. Like T codes, you know, only GRN and all. Then you, have, you should also say, uh, scenario based question for uh, now i'll come to sourcing uh, like if there are two vendors and both have the same price same quality same quantity then you have to say whoever is a nearer supplier you'll take the material from him and whenever they ask you how do you negotiate with the suppliers these are the parameters apart from these there are no other parameters you have to just 
read on these parameters itself. So if there is a single supplier not ready to decrease the price, you have to say, Sabhi batane ka. Uh, you'll speak on payment terms, inco terms, value addition, quantity, contracts, AMCs. You'll try to convince that way you have to say for any of the given question. And first try to understand the question and then answer, okay? And then next, what is AMC? AMC means annual maintenance contract. So suppose what is annual? If suppose if I take AutoCAD software, I take 10 licenses from AutoCAD, Autodesk, and 3 lakh is the license cost per year. So no, 3 lakh is the license cost for totally 10 licenses. But every year I need to pay AMC of 10%, that is 30,000 because I'm using those licenses. So three suppliers are there. One supplier is saying AMC is 20,000. One more is saying 25, one more is saying 30. Who is better? 20,000 because annual maintenance is better. If you buy laptops, 500 laptops, one vendor is saying he will do free servicing, free updates uh, for, for first year. And another supplier is saying he'll take amount. So who is better? Free one is better. So that is AMC. Then apart from that, few questions uh, for sourcing which you have to google strategic sourcing steps very important read about these guys spot buying to spot buying what is tactical sourcing so if they ask you you say you are majorly doing strategic sourcing and doing the negotiations what tools you used for sourcing you have to say sap ecc what version we are using and apart from that websites which i showed you just now those websites you are using for sourcing and apart from that yeah if they ask you what is force measure in contract? So force measure means, see, sometimes if you get tsunami and all these things, so few points in contract gets relaxed. Okay. In case of act of God, natural calamity. So that is this. So rarely asked redlining in contract. Google this also. Okay. Then apart from that, what is RFX? Okay, RFX means request for X nikal diya, Q, I lika request for information, Q means quotation, P for proposal. What is request for information? If I want a rough information about a product, rough information, then I'll submit a RFI. If you go to buy a bike, will you ask RFI? No, you'll submit RFQ, like you'll ask for quotation. In case of exact details, I need quotation. And if I have a land of 25 acres and I want to build some project, so then I tell suppliers to submit their proposals. So this is RFI, RFQ, RFP, which you have to read about. Okay. Next challenge is faced you have done. Next, what are the process improvements? So process improvements, you, you can say you implement, you did not implement AutoPO, but you had suggested AutoPO idea, but it did not get implemented because this process required three months and two employees to work on this process, but there was no budget. So because of that, this idea was appreciated, but this idea was put on hold. So this is AutoPO process where you can convert all the PRs into POs automatically by enabling AutoPO in vendor master, material master, info record, source list, and then fixing the PRs, fixing the vendors in a PR. You can do auto PO by using ME59 decode. This is our topic also, read about that. And what benefit this would have? This would save your cost, this would save your time, as well as the process would be more efficient. These were benefits, but was it implemented? No, because of this. To implement, it would take three months process and plus two employees were required. There was no budget. So because of that, idea was appreciated. One more process improvement you can say, in SAP, there is an option personal setting in P PO. So in personal setting, you can keep default values. So these default values means what? That if there are any repeated values, you can keep it default so the time taken to create a PO will be reduced. So suppose uh, you are creating 100 POs on a daily basis for same plant, 1000 and triple zero. Make it default. It will save at least your 15 minutes. If you are three people working in a team, it will save 45 minutes of time. That is a time save that you can save. Payment terms, income terms also I have told you, AMC, sourcing, how to explain, PR to PO, day to day profile, uh, how many PRs, how many POs has been done. Okay. So apart from that, we will be sharing some list of questions in the group. This will be pertaining to logistics interviews, your lo interviews, logistics and inventory management, which is rare actually. If it is there on this, you can prepare for this. Like you can prepare for Google these all things. Seven hours of logistics. Then apart from that, what is 80-20 analysis? What is ABC analysis? 
what is first in first out analysis okay read about this also what do you mean by safety stock and reorder point and mrp mrp on material requirement safety stock means it's like your bike if you go in a bike you have a reserve reserve means what it is a safety reserve means you have to refuel same thing if you keep a safety stock for a material if the material falls below the safety stock you have to do the reorder of that material this happens automatically through mrp material requirement planning just read about that and apart from this these all questions will give you as a part of google also guys so these questions also will i'll be sharing in every time i've shared these questions in a group to google but students don't google but these are out of the blue questions sometimes it will be asked but if you're prepared enough it will be very much beneficial for you okay so material vendor list i've given you separately as well so safety stock is done apart from that you can google one more thing in po guys what are the different types of po's you're creating not google i'll tell you a few things so you can say you are creating a standard po that is for raw materials. Apart from that, you are creating STOs, stock transport orders, transfer of material from one plant to another plant. So these POs also you are creating in SAP. Uh, apart from that, certain types you are creating service POs also. Usually you create a material PO. And apart from that, you have knowledge about consignment and subcontracting. So read one line about consignment or subcontracting process. These are the types of POs what you are creating. One more thing you can Google here. I will tell specific to Google is cost center not needed and catalog and non catalog orders. Okay. So Google this one's catalog and non catalog orders. This may help you. And apart from that few questions, which are rarely asked, but yeah, sometimes very, sometimes it will be asked, but I don't know if your luck, bad luck. And that time only those questions has been asked. So because of that, I told you Google these questions, whatever I've told to Google, if they ask you, it is very important for you to answer this and even google about the gsts but we are not working on gst like you can say all the tax codes if they ask you anything about tax codes say all the tax codes in sap are maintained in vendor master data by vendor management team so this will be automatically coming in po but still read like google tax codes in us never say you are dealing with domestic suppliers okay as client is us i told you so if you want but still google cgst SGST and IGST. Okay. Two way match, three way match also is done. Negotiation parameters. And then some scenario like there is a single supplier not reducing the price, as I told, maintain contract. So, apart from that, how you match the PO two way match or a three way match. Okay. And you, there are two suppliers, everything is same. Then you can say whichever is near, you can go with those suppliers. Okay. Apart from that, let me recall if anything else. Yeah, this would be more enough for your procurement and sourcing to gather uh, these questions. So read this. Oh, sorry. First, listen to this. Write by heart. Okay. And whatever I told to Google, definitely you have to Google. No uh, second thought in that. Apart from that, yeah. Basic T codes also you need to do research and keep. And in one line, see, sometimes what happens, whatever you have written in resume, sometimes you copy paste the resume. You only don't know what you have written. So basically go through the resume also and see what points you have written. And beside that, write one liner answers also. Okay. For example, you have written info record and you don't know what is info record. So just info record is to maintain the price and for vendor and price for vendor and material. And the T code is ME11 source list. Source list is used to fix or block the vendor, fix or block the vendor for a particular material vendor and material and the t code is me zero so basic things this way i'm saying okay so read your resume apart from this so let me go through this again if anything i've missed day-to-day -day profile your property for me okay if they ask you what is your escalation matrix what is your escalation matrix so say your escalation matrix is whatever escalation comes escalation means you did something like Two hours mein tumne PO nahi banaya, escalation manager ko jayega, manager will ask you why you did not convert. It is an issue. So you have to say you'll reach out to team lead, then manager, uh, then try to understand, like escalate any issue. Also, you are not understanding, you'll escalate to your team lead manager. And if you have done some issue, they will tell you to improve. Then how will you improve? You'll do RCA. RCA means root cause analysis. Read about this a bit, root cause analysis. So you'll just try to understand why you did wrong, what was the error. 
and try to rectify it for the next time. Okay, you can create a document. Then if they ask you, have you led a team? If your experience is more than five, six years, you have to say, yeah, two to three team members were reporting to you. Uh, you are assigning them their daily work. You're checking their leaves, uh, time sheets, everything you are checking about that, you can say. But from that, process improvement, you're told. Why you are looking for a job change, I've told in the HR things. Hmm, very important. What is KPI? KPI, Key Performance Indicators. Okay, so key performance indicators means how your salary increases in the company every year, guys. So you say, what were your KPI? So you should say you were measured on SLA, like how many SLAs you have breached. So suppose if I say I'm your manager and if I say 98% is your SLA for this year for PR to PO. For this year, uh, I will say defects. How many POs defects should be 98% is your SLA. And you have to compulsory do one certificate, one 20 hours training. This is your SLA for this year. So now what do you mean? How you will include this? Try to understand. If I assign you 100 PRs in this whole year, in this whole year, and you made 100 PO, but in that three POs, you miss the time. That means you are 97%. And all 100 POs are accurate. That means your quality of the PO is 100%. And you did 20 hours of learning also. So what happened? Did you did do 20 hours of learning in the year? Yes. Defects, how much I told you? You can go wrong in two POs, but still you did all 100 correct. But time, I told you nine, two PRs, you can like two times you can go wrong in timing also, but you have gone wrong three times. So you did not meet this parameter of performance. You made this depending on that your rating will be there in the company. So you have to say these were your parameters. And how do you measure vendor performance if they ask you? So then you have to say if vendor is on time delivery material ka de hai, kya, jo bhi material de hai, quality team se uska ratio le, input ka, how many materials are correct how many materials are defective how many you have ordered that much he has delivered or no that also is parameter and sometimes after sales service on all these parameters these are vendor kpis you measure vendor on this and if the vendor kpi is below 95 percent you will issue him the warning letter repeatedly he is not improving you block the vendor and search for another supplier And whom do you report to? You have to say team lead. Who is below you? No, you're saying if you are four years experience, say now you're working as a procurement, no one is below you. You're below you means there will be interns and trainees, you can say. Okay, so just give me a second. Like, let me think again if any question I have missed. Disclosure agreement. So sometimes you can Google non disclosure agreement one. Now, what all tools are you using? What ERP software are you using? You have to say tools you are working MS Office like Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook for emails, SAP for your P2P process. Apart from SAP, some service now for ticketing, some third party developed tools also you are using, you can say. Okay. If any other tool also, you can say you can easily work on any other tool if some basic training is provided to you. One more thing, which I want to, what is bomb also, they may ask you. So whenever you want to negotiate with the vendor, you can say bill of material bomb, bill of material. So in this, you will have all the details of the materials, it's sub assemblies, assemblies, and on a bill of material, you can prepare a quotation also. So read about a bomb a bit. So suppose if you want to buy a laptop from me, I am a laptop vendor. I will be more smarter than you because I'm selling the laptop. So you also need to be more smarter before coming and negotiating. So you need to go through the bill of material, try to understand what a laptop contains and then come and negotiate. This is bill of material. Yeah. So these are the things in procurement and sourcing. If you do this more than enough. So I'll be sharing you this video and next video we will be taking on vendor master interview, material master interview and also order management interview. Okay.